Hello, and welcome back to Remnant from the Ashes. Between episodes, I did a little bit more leveling. I got Armor Piercer up, worked a little bit on Trigger Happy and Wisdom, got Guardian's Blessing, but not much has changed in that regard. Managed to get a couple more amulets, uh, Driftstone, then polish whetstone, which, as you can see, gives bonus crit chance and crit damage against bleeding enemies, and then the razor wire necklace, which increases damage dealt to bleeding enemies. Tragic, you can only have one of these because both are pretty solid. Guess it depends if you're running like a full crit build, then you probably just run that. But at the same time, I eh, no, you could run that because then you'd run Razor Stone as a ring to apply bleeds. But I also picked up a couple things, Soul Ember, so summons will explode on death. There was Prismatic Diamond Ring, so elemental damage up by 10%. Got a couple other ones, I just can't remember them. They weren't noticeable or noteworthy, unfortunately, but what can you do? But I did get three more boss items, so we'll quick make the items. I'll show you what they are first. We got Jackal's Ivory, Steel of Agony, and Hammerhead's Ore. This one is from the unclean one. Remember when I said you're supposed to sneak in? I had to do it in adventure mode and got it. I'm not going to use it because it's yeah. not that good. Fine. Let's have a look. Cold spear is not bad. But there are other cold abilities I think are better. Yep, yeah, butcher's flail and then chain blade, which I think if you're going to use a melee weapon that isn't a ranged melee weapon. Chain Blade's probably one of the better ones because the attack extends the range of it so you actually have pretty good sweeps. But I'm good with Riven. There is some cool stuff you can do here. Hang on, does that innately deal... Okay, it doesn't. I thought for a second it innately did cold damage or frost, because I was like, that looks like the effect. It's not bad. But yeah, I wish weapons... Like, the green and red's cool, but what I would appreciate is, let's say... Let, let's say I'm using the Petrified Maul. It says, a Petrified Branch that deals rot damage. I would like to see the rot symbol next to the damage, so that I know, okay, this is what it does, and I can adjust accordingly, instead of trying to read a little, like, three sentence blurb maybe or four that may explain what's going on but may not it's a minor thing but it's definitely a quality of life thing I hope they adjust We're getting awfully close to the end of the game, honestly, because we have, we just have to wrap up Yasha, which will be, go through here, maybe another area, dungeon or two, and then we do the final boss fight, and then we have subject to number, 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 I can't remember what it is, but that DLC, and then it's done, 
everything else is just adventure like swamps of course this just added adventure mode stuff so it's it's winding down pretty fast but this game isn't very long it is definitely not a I mean you can't even say it's not a souls game because earlier souls games you could blow through pretty fast Oh. Okay. Yep, I thought this was the place. We have to kind of sprint through to trigger some boss fights. Because the Blink Thief, if we can kill him, we get the Ricochet Crossbow, which is a really good weapon, at least against groups of enemies. Solo enemies, it's kind of crap, but it has its situational uses. big thing is killing him in time, because this guy's actually going down really fast. Okay, cool. Every other time I tried to do this fight, he took forever and just eight shots. Yeah, ricochet rifle. We'll quick switch to it just to prove it. Actually, no, I can't because of my thing. But yeah, I'll just explain it at the moment. What it does is it fires discs that will bounce off walls and home in on enemies, so you could sit there, hit a guy, it'll bounce off him and home as close as possible to another target. So it's really good. It's just situational. I'm a fan of it, I think it's really good. But, you know, results may vary. I will admit it wouldn't benefit a ton from my fire rate boost skills that I've been pouring in, simply because it's a single shot weapon. How was I overcharged? Now we'll do a quick switch out just to use the ricochet rifle for a second. It's too cool not to use. Hey, skill point. Always like to see that. Like, watch this. We'll hit this guy and hit the other one in front of us. Or we'll hit the floor and hit that guy. So it's really good, it's just, as you saw, once it hits, when there's only one guy left, the value of it really falls off. Which is unfortunate, but not much you can really do about it. But 
Please, I, I just want to go up the stairs. I am eager to see what Remnant 2 has in store. I haven't seen any new gameplay lately. But I figure... I mentioned it in one of my Inquisitor videos. We're getting close to having it uh, having Summer Games Fest come up. Not, not this month. It'll be beginning of June. But hopefully we hear something by then. Because the game looks good enough to warrant a release date. Hmm. Didn't realize this is a dead end. Oh well. Now this has me thinking, because there's only a few paths you can take. And we have to reach the prison Ford is kept in. And it can't be this way, because this way I think leads back to the, uh, the ambush. You know what, I'll search a couple places and we'll figure this out. Okay, so finally figured it out. We had to go to the bottom of the map, go through the Shrine of Immortals, the ambush site, and it spit us out here. I knew there had to be somewhere that I didn't complete. And I just couldn't remember where. Luckily it didn't take me too long to run through. I knew there's only so many dungeons. Because I ended up going through one that Currently, we can't do... Maybe we'll find the item here, actually. Because then we can double back and do that dungeon. It wouldn't really get us anywhere. It's kind of a... It's a dead-end dungeon. Because you go in, you face the Root Horror, which shows that Yesha is being invaded. And then from there, you kill the Root Horror, and that ends it. Or you beat it, it flees, you go outside, and if you rush fast enough, you can apparently save an NPC, but I've only done that once. Other, every other time people take too long and they die. It's an interesting way of kind of showing that Yesha isn't immune to whatever's happening. That however the root invades, they're vulnerable to it too. Alright. Just trying to figure out what direction everything is. See, the unfortunate part is this is one of those times where it's like, oh, yeah, the ricochet rifle would be great. But 
then it loses the value right after the fight. While a standard assault rifle, yeah, it's single target, but it's consistent. Actually, I want to check something. Oh, yeah. So those points have been put into trigger happy are paying off. Slowly. It's actually more for me to start using like the beam rifle potentially. Because I was contemplating it but the four shots a second I think is really weak. But my big thing is, it deals more damage, I'm trying to figure out where I can squeeze the most damage out. I'm trying to figure out if something like Wisdom, which gives me elemental damage, if that's going to boost my damage output. Just trying to squeeze every little bit out. Funny enough, I looked at the elements and resistances. Fire is practically universal. There are very select enemies actually resistant to fire. Most are weak to it. Root Rot? That is an extreme gamble. And the obvious fact that it doesn't do damage. It's just kind of a, hey, you did the effect. Woo. What I think would have been cool is if they made over. Rot do an AoE effect around the target. This way it's like, oh hey, they're afflicted with Rot. They deal damage in an area. And it can infect other enemies. Or... They explode in a cloud of root rot on death, kind of like how radiation in Borderlands 3 works. Because at least that way you feel incentivized to use the ability and to use the damage, as opposed to currently where it's like, yeah, it does a thing. Because I'll take having it just be like trash clear. Heretic's Nest. Okay, which boss is this? Because it's clearly not Seer and Scald. Is this the... Totem Father? I don't think so, because I think Totem Father has a... Yeah, it might be. That fight's not that difficult. One thing I like too is when I say something isn't difficult, it really isn't. As long as you do the basic, oh, max out your health stat max out basic stats. You don't need... You really don't need all the crap I put in. I just... Because I keep leveling, I'm just like, yeah, just toss it in this trait. Why not? But basic stuff, oh yeah, have health. Maybe do stamina if you really feel inclined. Mod power generation. You could do range damage reduction. Elemental resist is key. Everything else is kind of just like, yeah, if you can afford it, toss it on. But it, it's a lot better than how it is in like Elden Ring or Dark Souls where I'll say, oh yeah, this fight, hell, I talked up every fight and because I was so overpowered, 
I just flattened everything. But that, into itself, is the problem that someone can say, Oh yeah, this is a really easy fight. Go in at level 5, beat the boss. And then you can go in at level 60, and if you don't know what you're doing, if your build's bad, stuff like that, you can just get flattened. That is something I will give this game. Build variety, while somewhat narrow, is also incredibly difficult to actually screw up. Like, the only way you're gonna have a lot of problems fighting bosses is if for some reason you decided, I'm not going to upgrade anything. And if you're wearing, like, the most unfitting rings possible. Like, you're a ranged or a summon build, and you're wearing the ones that give you, like, extra damage against bleeding enemies. But you don't have anything that causes bleed. Or weird combos like that that shouldn't make sense in the first place. Because yeah, at that point, that is on you. Guess the only other thing would be, if you did a build and you didn't understand how some of it worked, like... How, how your armor works, or what armor you should pick. I don't know where that caster is, but I... Oh, there he is. I said, but I don't really care to find him. But that's really it. There's a few spots... It sounded like Mike Tyson there when I said spots threw a T in there for some reason, but a few spots that you can you can actually screw up, but it's like, oh, you put summon damage, but you don't summon. Okay. Spend 2,500 scrap and buy a skill reset. I did that already once because I didn't like that I put skill points into the wrong thing. And instead of just being like, oh yeah, it's a lost, like, three points, I was like, nah, I'll just respec and put those where they need to be. This game also has, if you haven't noticed, especially if you're playing and you do co-op, it has the soul style enemy scale with the number of players. So you'll notice if you're playing alone, just like me, I'm knocking these dudes down three bullets. I don't have to dump a mag into really anything. But then in multiplayer, like that big cannon guy, he might take a full magazine. Bosses end up being way meatier. And it's... Like everything, it makes sense. Because if you had the same health for one player as you do three, you would just cut that boss down so easily. You would have to add so many different modifiers and effects to make them more difficult that's easier just to be like, nah, give them 50% health boost per player or something. Oh, this fight. Yep, I know this fight. Yeah. That guy down there. He's really not that difficult. 
Ah, bomb guy. Yeah, when when your ads are more dangerous than your boss, there's a problem. But this is by playing one we're playing on the easiest difficulty and two by playing summoner you're also playing easy mode but there's no incentive to play harder difficulties i mentioned it before it's it's just not worth it yeah if you want to sit around and flex nuts on people but nobody cares if you really want to play a challenge mode you play just the one life survival mode That actually gives you rewards for doing it, too. I think if you beat... I want to say the final boss. You end up getting... God, what is it? I think it's a amulet that gives you 6% lifesteal on all ranged and melee attacks. So you can kind of figure out you could do some pretty nasty combos. Depending on if it's an amulet or a ring, I think it's an amulet. But you do that. The one Iskal ban that lets you heal allies. And then either one of the healing rings or you have a ring that negate because the he the team heal one makes you deal 15 percent less damage so you can get rings to there's the one that gives you like 12 percent damage up so you can almost negate the damage down and then just that either the warped armor that we don't have or the banded armor and an lmg or not an lmg the tommy gun and you just mag dump and heal there's plenty of ways you can run it Oh, okay, yeah, so we can run that dungeon now, because we have this guy, and this item. That's also just really annoying, because the dungeon is in a completely different world zone. So you have to complete the dungeon, fight the boss, then run through another area to here. Actually, we might be able to just teleport. Cause let's see. We're gonna try it. This might really be stupid, but we'll give it a try. We'll start at the ruins. Let's see, can does it let us go back to stuck ruins? Or stuck merchant? Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll just go do this dungeon quick then. Because it's just southwest of us. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just go do that because it's not that difficult and it's fast if I know which direction I'm going. And the completionist in me wants it done. Ah! 
And I don't really care about the uh, scrap because I'm at 173,000. Oh, I probably should have talked to the merchant, shouldn't I? Alright, you know what, we'll... Since we keep having a ping pong, we'll come back to here. I'm gonna talk to him quick and then... We'll, through the power of editing, end up back in the dungeon. I did not realize. Uh, what brings it so far from home? A man? Other Pixel Tech? Ugh, I cannot help it. <laughs> but perhaps I can offer something else. I acquire things, Pixel Tech. Anything it needs, no matter how rare or dangerous. <laughs> Provided it does not ask the origins. I also deal in information. Should that interest it more. <laughs> I hear many things a Pexel Tech would be interested in. Let me share with it my world secrets. For a price. The Lemire inter the dead of the pen. Especially those of the nobility. But they work in secret, experimenting on those who had once eaten the fruit of life. This is at the Empress's behest. She seeks to learn the source of the tree's disease. Our guardian is gone. Destroyed by Pexel Tech like you. It removed our protector. Trying to lure an enemy from its world to our own. They say that is the reason the trees now rise against us. The nobility enjoys long life thanks to the fruit of the Thane. But the fruit has gone bad. And the nobles worry. Yet they will not turn against their empress. The risk is too great. Although nobility are long lived and many, only a few dozen true immortals exist. They are those who ate from the Tree of Life at the beginning. The Empress's companions who eat from it still. Every noble can trace their ancestry to an immortal. The Empress's palace is built around the Theon itself. Her throne rests at the foot of the great tree. She alone controls who receives the fruit. She alone knows of the tree's disease and says nothing. The nobles survive on fruit of life as doled out by the Empress. But her gifts have waned over the years. <laughs> Some say she hoards it for herself. Others, the Empress among them, accuse villagers of stealing. None believe this. The truth is, the fruit has gone bad. The Empress hides this. The nobles survive on fruit of... Some say she... The truth is... It has come to the right place. So normally there's stuff here. I can't remember what the armor and trinkets are, but the weapon is a spear. I already bought it. We'll buy a few of those, why not? business as well as I. But yeah. Little... Good to talk to her before triggering that boss fight and getting her killed. But also interesting that 
because Paxiltech isn't human, it's essentially outsider, to my knowledge. So another outsider got their guardian killed. It, the thing is, they don't give a time frame because it almost sounds like the their guardian died and then the root came in and the tree started going bad for the fruit of immortality. Which makes me think that it's actually just the root killing the tree or possessing it. But now we can go back to that dungeon. Okay. We're finally here. Everything's been done. Let's see, trait points. Keep that fire rate up. Now, we went, touched that button in the middle, and then it rotated. That's all that happened. Now we put in the curio. And there is your evidence of the root taking over. And this is what I always do. And if you have the turret, you should do the same. Yeah, the little snakes are annoying. Okay, so he's gone now. There is nothing else here. So now we have to hurry up and try to catch him at the trapped merchant. we couldn't save the merchant. What we can do is prepare, though, because that ring will trigger the fight. Try to keep the serpent away from the turrets so that they last as long as possible. Yeah, and the root horn really likes to stagger. Yeah. I think having to go through the load zones kind of screwed this run up, but it's whatever. I, I don't even think you get anything worthwhile from that. From beating the boss, you get Guardian's Blessing. Which I should probably look at it for you for a second. Melee damage reduction, so you can get up to 10%. Which isn't bad. I'm going to call it here. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button, it helps out the channel a lot, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.